Bing bazoo, welcome to class. Um, that's my new catchphrase. So today we're starting on a new chapter, but before we start, just to let you know, the midterm will be on Thursday, so please be prepared. It'll be on chapters four and five, and I'll say more about that later. Okay, so today we move on to chapter six, so this will not be on the midterm, but it is sort of helpful with review anyway, so it's good timing. Today we're gonna learn how to graph sine and cosine. So that means that first of all, we're gonna start thinking of what we used to call sine of theta as just this thing um, as a function. So a function, remember, is a rule. And all that's really happening is we're just writing it a little bit differently. Um, so now, since it's a function, I can think about points on the graph, and that's the whole point. So then it makes a graph. Um, so how does this graph look? That's what we want to think about. So we just want to think about um, plugging in x values that are easy to understand. So that just means plugging in nice angles because that's what we were doing before to figure out sine of nice angles. Um, so, so to start, we'll plug in um, nice x values, but our x values, these are just gonna be angles because I'm not gonna plug in like 32 because I don't know what sine of 32 is. I'm only gonna plug in sine, uh, I'm gonna like plug in things that I know sine of. Um, so let's do that. So what is sine, let me use my function notation actually, sorry. So what would f of zero be? So sine of zero, what would that be? Well, that I can do because the zero angle is the angle that gives you the point one comma zero. So what's the y value? That's just zero and that's sine of the angle. So the angle is this red line here. Um, so sine of zero is zero. So what does that mean that the point on the graph is? zero comma zero, because I plugged in zero, and then I got zero as the answer. Um, so keep in mind that the graph we're making, the points are gonna come from using this circle, but the graph is not the circle, okay? It's two different things. We just use the circle to make the graph. Um, all right, so what's another point that I can plug in? Well, I know all of these ones, and I hope you do too. I know sine of these three angles. What are these three nice angles? Pi over six, um, pi over four, and pi over three, right? So we know those points and then we know the y values, but in fact, I'm gonna skip over all three of those and we're gonna, we don't need those ones to graph sine. We're gonna graph instead this angle here, this blue angle. So, so what point is that? It's zero comma one, and what's the angle there? It's pi over two, it's half of a half rotation. So we are gonna plug in pi over two as our next point. Not these other nice angles, but we're gonna skip all those ones and, and get an even nicer and even easier angle where the point is just zero comma one. Um, so, so sine of pi over two is one. So then the point on the graph is what? Well, I plugged in pi over two and I got one as the answer. So that's the point there. Um, and then I'm just gonna keep going around. So maybe I'll use the third color here. I'm gonna keep doing all the corners. So what's this point here? Negative one comma zero. And what's the angle there? That's just pi, half rotation is pi. So that tells me that f of pi, which is just sine of pi, is, what's the y value there? It's zero. So then what's the point on the graph? 
of sine of x, it's, well, I plugged in pi and I got zero. Um, all right, and then let's do the bottom one here. So let's see, I run out of colors, these dark blue. So this one down here is zero comma negative one, and the angle there is three pi over two. So f of three pi over two, that's the next one we're gonna look at is what? The height is negative one. So the point is what? Three pi over two is what I plugged in. And then I got negative one. And then we're gonna do one more, which is a full rotation. Um, so I'm out of color, so I'll just reuse white, I guess. So a full rotation is how much? That's two pi. So if I do a full rotation, what's the point on the unit circle? Well, it's just this point again, one comma zero. I'm just back to where I started. So if I plug in two pi, I'm actually back exactly where I started, which is at zero. So what's the point on the graph? Two pi comma zero. Um, so these are the points I'm gonna start by looking at. So there's five of them. If you notice, there's four, and the fifth one was the first one way up here. And then what you have to notice is that the graph, the points on the graph are just going to sort of repeat because if I go around the circle more, so like the next good angle, if I keep doing the corners would be um, five pi over two. And that would just be at the top there and I would still get the same Y value. I'd get one again. So what that means is that the graph is going to be cyclic. Um, but actually, let me use the word periodic. So that just means it's going to repeat the shape over and over. Um, and it's going to repeat itself after 2 pi. Um, because when you go around the circle, that's 1, that's one 2 pi. So we say the period, so this is an official definition, is 2 pi. Because that's how long it takes until you get back to where you started. Okay, so that'll come back later. But for now, let's graph these four points. So, so here's how not to do it, first of all. So don't do this yet. Um, so when you normally graph something, you go like one, two, three, you put little tick marks, and then that helps you, right? Um, so, so let's see why this is a bad idea. So if I, if I want to do zero, zero, okay, that's fine. That's just right there. But what about if I want to do the next one, which was pi over two comma um, one? Well, where the hell is this? Where is pi over two? I don't know. Pi is like 3.14. So that's like maybe like three, like one and a half ish somewhere. I don't know. Something over there, pi over two is somewhere around here. So then that would be your point. Um, and it's gonna get very confusing to graph these points if you do that. So we cheat. What's, how can we fix this? Don't count tick marks by whole numbers. Just use exactly what you need on the x-axis, meaning use pi over two as, the, as a tick mark and then pi as the next one, and then three pi over two as the next one, and then two pi as the next one, because those are the x values you're gonna plug in. That's the trick to graphing sine in a much easier way. So now we're really gonna graph, that was a lie the first time. So here's pi over two. So pi over two is half of pi, so this better be pretty symmetric, this distance here. And then three pi over two is another half of that and then two pi is the whole way to the end. Um, and then we're gonna plug in, sorry, we're gonna plot our points. So what we need to know is that when I plug these nice um, angles in, what popped out? Only ever zero, one, or negative one. Um, so, so let me use another color here. So zero, zero was the first one. Uh, pi over two comma one was the next one pi 
comma zero back to zero again was the next one. Uh, three pi over two comma negative one was the next one. And then two pi comma zero back to zero again was the next one. So we had these five dots. Um, and then the idea is we're just gonna, we're just gonna connect them as best we can. And it's gonna get a nice little shape like this. Okay, so this is called the graph of one period of sine of x because the graph keeps going. I only just graphed one, one period, which comes from rotating around the circle once. Um, but because it's periodic, what's gonna happen is if I keep going another period, so what would that be? That would mean I would end at four pi because from here to here is two pi more. That's one period. So what's gonna happen is as I go around the circle the second time, my sine values are just gonna go up and down the same way as they did before. So I'm just gonna get the exact same shape. Uh, that's kind of crappy, but, but it should be exactly the same. Um, and it's just gonna keep repeating like that. Same thing in the other direction. What's the other direction mean? That means I rotate backwards. So in fact, the other way is gonna look the same too. And so in general, let me just draw the shape. Sine of X has this shape where it just keeps going in both directions forever. But we only graph one period. which just means one rotation until it repeats itself. Because as you can see, like from here to here, if I just go from the screen line to the screen line, that's the same. Sorry, sorry, I skipped, I skipped one. Sorry, if I go from, ah, how do I do this? There it is. This green line to this green line, that's the same shape as this red line to this red line. It's the same exact shape. Um, so we're only ever gonna graph one period. And it just looks like that. Okay, so, so that's the graph of sine of x. Um, but what we wanna do is understand how I can then graph transformations of sine of x. Um, so that's the trick. Okay, so, so next, let's graph something like this. Oh, stupid thing. G of, damn it. G of x equals, um, so, so here's what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna stick a number inside. So I'm just gonna stick a two in here and we're gonna see what that does to the graph. Okay, um, so let's try that. Well, here's the idea. The two, you should think about it as um, it like doubles the speed of going around the circle. So what does that mean exactly? Well, think about this right here. So, so here's my unit circle. Um, so if I plug in sine of, let's just say pi, that's this guy, that's the y value over here, so it's um, zero. But if I plug in sine of pi into, sorry, if I plug in pi into sine of 2x, I get this. And then I'm all the way over here. I've gone around already. And I still get zero. But the idea is that this 2 makes it so that I get to two pi just by plugging in pi. So, 
So I don't have to go as far. in terms of plugging in x values. To get to where I used to get to get to the same place. Um, so, so what that means is that when I look at the graph, So first I'll just sketch it before I show you the real way to do it. The idea will be that I only have to plug in pi to get all the way to two pi. So that means that my whole graph is gonna be um, finished by the time I get to pi. And by finished, I mean I'm gonna do one of these shapes. Whereas before I had to, I had to go all the way to two pi to have that shape. Like that. Um, so that's what this two is doing, is it's making it go faster so it, it finishes a period in, in less time, less x values. Um, and that's the whole point. So then the period of sine of two x is what? Well, the idea is that if you go, if you, you take your original period, which is two pi, and you go twice as fast, the period is how long it takes to the, uh, get to the end. If you go twice as fast, it's only gonna take you half as long to get to the end, right? Like if I drive 60 miles an hour to get somewhere, but then on the way back I go 120 miles an hour, it's gonna only take half as long. So that's the idea. That is that you should think about the period as like how long it takes to, to get to the end. Or how long it takes until it repeats itself. And so if you go twice as fast, it takes half as long. Um, and all this is really just to say the trick is that the period is always going to be 2 pi divided by this number in front of the x. Because it'll always work the same way. If it was a 3, then that means you're going 3 times as fast and you're going to take a third as long. Um, so that's always going to be the period of whatever sign graph you're doing. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so then... Now we can actually do the graph for real. And um, I just sort of want you to approach it methodically, even though I'm giving you all this theory. So the idea is that first of all, you need the period, which I just told you is two pi over two, which is now pi. Um, and then the second step I want you to do is I just want you to cut that into four pieces. So, so uh, let me don't say it like that. Just cut it into four, divide it by four. Just divide it by four. So you do the period and you cut it into fourths. That is always gonna be the same. So then let me say why we do that. Well, it all goes back to the original graph. If you notice that on the original sine graph here, that I did the first time. Um, a fourth of the way to the end of the period is this pi over two guy. And that's where the top of the sine graph is. And then another fourth gets you back down to the middle. And then another fourth of the way gets you to the bottom. And then another fourth of the way gets you to the end. Now, when the sine graph goes faster and the period gets cut in half like right here, that property is still gonna happen. So I even drew it like that here. A fourth of the way to the end gets you to the top. A fourth of the way after that gets you to the middle. Another fourth of the way to the end of the period gets you to the bottom. And then the last fourth gets you to the end of the period. Um, and then there's the starting point, of course. So 
that property will always hold because the whole um, point of transformations is that everything is preserved the same way. So the reason that we're going to do this is because every fourth of the period uh, corresponds to one of those good angles we did at the start, but now changed. But we don't have to figure out those angles every time. That's the nice part. So it corresponds to the top, the middle, and the bottom of sine of, of the sine graph. And so let me just draw that shape one more time here. Then let me draw a little bit better than that. So here's the starting point. A fourth of the way to the end gets you right to the top. I don't need that dot in the middle. That doesn't make sense. So right there. And then another fourth takes you back to the middle. And then another fourth here. And then another fourth here. And that property is always going to be preserved. So that's why we're going to get that number pi over four or whatever the period is divided by four. So with just that, we can graph now. Okay, so then graph. So how do we do that? Um, so all we do is we start with zero, zero, because that's going to be, that's not going to change because sine of two times zero is still sine of zero, which is still going to be zero. So that point is the same. Um, but then the we're going to make our four tick marks and they're going to be found by just adding pi over fours because that's the period over four. So what's this tick mark going to be? It's going to be pi over four. The next one will be two pi over four, three pi over four, and then four pi over four, which is just pi. If you want to reduce, you can. And then you just redraw the four points, the next four points, which is to say that when you plug in the first fourth, that'll always take you to the top of the sine graph, which in this case is at one, that'll change later. Um, when you plug in another fourth, you'll go back down to the middle. And then when you plug in the next fourth, you'll go back down to negative one. And then the next fourth will take you back to the end of the period. And this will always work out. So what I didn't have to do is actually figure out any of these coordinates. As long as I just think about it in this way, I don't have to worry about doing that. If you just plug in random angles, it's not going to work out nice. Um, so this is a lot nicer than that. Okay, so the next video, we're going to do more examples. All right, class, welcome to the second part. Um, so we are going to look at transformations now. So that's what's next. Um, and we're going to see how to graph them. Okay, so the best way to learn how to do this is just to jump in. So we're just going to jump in with a big example. So we're going to graph um, one period of, so we're going to put all these bells and whistles on it. Um, so what that means is it's going to be our sine of x, but we're going to have lots of stuff that's so going to look a little bit more complicated. But don't let that scare you away. Um, the whole point is that as long as you know how to graph the original shape, this guy, then it'll be a cinch, okay? I promise. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow these steps. First, we're gonna gather some info. So these are the first steps. Okay, um, so some of this stuff, we don't know what it does yet, but that's okay. Um, so that's the first thing we're gonna look at is, this is called the amplitude and it's this number here. Um, so people call it A for amplitude. The idea is just this is how big sine will get, which is what we'll see later. 
Um, the next thing we want to get is the shifts. So this should be a little bit more familiar because we've done stuff like this before. So the idea is if you look at the X and you see something added or subtracted to it, what does that tell you? That tells you the right and left amount of shifting because it's a minusing the pi over two, it's gonna be a right by pi over two. Um, and then this plus one, the thing on the outside, always tells you up and down motion. So that plus one tells you that the graph is gonna move up one. So the basic idea is we're starting with this thing and it's gonna be what's moving right pi over two and up one. Um, okay, so the next thing is the period. So remember that that is always two pi divided by this number here because the idea is that that's how fast the sine graph is moving. And so the amount of time it takes is the period divided by that speed. And so here the twos actually just cancel and you just get pi. Okay, so that's the period. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the period into four pieces. So we're gonna do the period divided by four. Um, so in this case, the period is just pi. We just figured that out. We're gonna divide it into four. Um, so don't worry about why we're doing these steps so, uh, so much yet, but just write them down. And I promise this is all you need to do to graph it. Um, okay, so, so let's go through the graphing steps now. Um, so this has its own set of steps. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to move um, zero, zero. Because, so I'll draw a sine of x here, just a little tiny sketch of it. Because the idea is that when you shift a graph, everything shifts together, right? So this zero comma zero, I wanna think about that as like the start of the graph. So if it's like the start of the graph, then that's what I should move first. Okay, so we're just gonna move zero, zero. Um, so how does it move? Well, that's based on the shifting, so it's gonna go right pi over two and up one, or right? So that means it's gonna be at pi over two comma one. Um, so let me zoom out here so I can just graph on the side here next to the steps. Um, let's see. All right, so that zero, zero is gonna go to pi over two comma one. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we are going to really think of this as being in the middle, meaning that we're gonna pretend that there's like this secret dotted line right here that's telling us like this is the middle of the sine graph because the graph just bounces up and down between it. So then we're also going to draw dotted line. Now it's not a part of the graph. It just helps us draw. So just keep that in mind. It's just there to help us draw but we're going to draw it nonetheless because the idea is that the graph is gonna hit that dotted line a couple more times right here and here. So it's good to know where that dotted line moves to because it also moves up just like the rest of the graph. So we're gonna draw that dotted line. Um, so next we're gonna bring in the amplitude and this is what it does. So we're gonna draw the top and the bottom of the sine of graph. So what does this mean? Well, so I'll do a little mini thing down here. The idea is if you have a number like a five or something in front of sine, well then what happens is that sine of x used to go 
from um, negative one to one. That was like as high and low as it used to go. And that's because sine of pi over two is one and then sine of three pi over two is negative one. But what that five on the outside does is it multiplies the y values by five. So that one is gonna become a five. It's gonna be five times as big. That negative one is gonna become a five, five times as big. Um, so then this is gonna go up and down five instead of one. And that's what that, that amplitude does for every sine graph from the middle, from that middle dotted line. So what that means is that over here, because the amplitude is three, I need to go up three and down three from the middle. So that takes me up to where? Well, one plus three is four. So maybe I'll draw this dotted line in red. And that's gonna be where the top of the sine graph touches. Because it used to go up and down one from the middle, but that got stretched by a multiple of three. Um, and then if I go down three from one, that gets me to negative two. So this is sort of the outline of how the graph will look. Um, so that's the second step. And that's where the amplitude comes in. And you're really just adding three and subtracting three, that's it. Okay, so step three. Let's see, I'll put it right here. Um, so step three is we're just gonna make the next four marks. So the idea there is that um, the original sine graph, you can think about it as being broken into four chunks. So this full distance is the period. And then if I go a fourth of the way to the period, that's when I get to the top. And that will stay the same when the period shrinks, like in this problem, because everything shrinks together. And then if I go another fourth, I get to this middle point. And then if I get to another fourth, I get to the bottom. And then another fourth after that gets me to the end because four fourths equals one whole period. That's the idea. So we're gonna make four marks to indicate those four um, important points on the sine graph, which is when it hits the top, when it hits the middle, and then when it hits the bottom. So this is when, or this is where, sine hits the top, bottom, and the middle. So we're gonna make those four marks. Now, where are they? What are the, what are the actual labels there? Um, well, it's a fourth of the way, that's why I divided by four on the period over here. That's why I did this. Because a fourth of the way to the end of the period is this next point here. So what is this next point? Well, it's pi over two plus a fourth of the way to the period. Um, so you do have to get common denominators in problems like this sometimes. So that'll end up with three pi over four. And then the next one, the next fourth, well, I just add another pi over four, another fourth of the way to, to the end of the period. And that takes me to uh, four pi over four. And then I just add another pi over four and I just keep doing that until I get to the end of the period. So I just keep adding pi's over fours. Um, and so how do I know that that six pi over four is actually correct? Well, it's because from beginning to end should be one period. So in this case, one period is pi. So if I take my initial point and I add pi to it, I better get to the end, um, which I do because I get three pi over two, which is the same as six pi over four. So that's just a verification. You don't have to do that part though. Um, so in any case, you make those four marks and then you've pretty much done the whole problem. The next thing is just to draw the same pattern. Because the whole point of transformations is that the graph we have is gonna look exactly like this. 
except it's somewhere else and it's maybe bigger or smaller or something like that. Um, but it has the same shape. So what that means is here's our new middle and then it's gonna go up, back to the middle, back to the bottom, back to the middle at each of those one fourth period. So at each of those tick marks, I'm gonna follow that pattern. So here's the first one, the middle. Then I go up to the top of the amplitude, then to the middle, then to the bottom, then back to the middle to draw my shape. Okay, um, and so that's it. So this is taking longer than I expected. So we are going to do one more example and then I'll put a daily problem and if we have time, I'll assign it. Otherwise it won't be due. So we shall see how long this takes um, because we didn't even get to cosine. So this is definitely gonna take another lecture to finish. Okay, so we're gonna graph one period of, so let's change it up a bit. So I'm gonna stick a negative here. Uh, let's put a different number here this time. And let's add, I don't know, pi over four. And then we will at the, on the outside um, subtract two. Okay, so a little bit quicker this time because the steps remain the same. So we're gonna get this amplitude again. Um, the negative, it's not gonna affect the height, how high up the sine wave goes from the middle. The negative, what it's gonna do is it's gonna cause some sort of flip, which we'll figure out later. But that, you should be used to by now. Um, so whenever there's a negative in the front of a graph, it always flips it upside down. So that's, you should assume that that's gonna happen, and it will. Um, okay, and then we do the shifting. So this is gonna go left, pi over four, down two, then we're gonna get the period. So that's always two pi divided by how much faster, AKA this number, how much faster the new sine graph is going. So you divide by the speed to get the new period. Um, and then you take that number and you cut it in half, I mean, cut it into fourths. So you might have trouble with this if you're not used to fractions. So how do I cut that into fourths? I do two pi over three times one over four, which is um, pi over six. So every pi over six is gonna be one of those nice top, middle, or bottom points. Okay, so now we graph. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shift. So let's do that, let's see. Um, and then I'm gonna give you one quick trick so this is actually bad to do. Don't draw that yet. What you wanna do is you should actually just draw the x-axis first. Don't draw the y-axis, and I'll tell you why later. But first, let's just do what I say. Okay, so draw the x-axis first only, um, and then let's do the shift. So it's gonna go um, negative pi over four, negative two, so you can just, you should stick uh, the negative pi over four anywhere you want on the x-axis, but you should make it to the left because I'm gonna draw my graph this way. So I need to make room on the right, so I'm gonna draw my negative pi over four towards the left there. Um, and then negative two, I don't really know where it is yet, but I'll just draw a dot somewhere down there. And then I'll make my dotted line. And then I'll know when I have my y-axis that I should put negative two right there. Okay, so next we draw the amplitude. So we draw the top, the bottom using the amplitude. So this time it's four. So I have to go up and down four from here. So let's see, this is at negative two. So I gotta go up four, that takes me up to two. And then I also gotta go down four. That takes me down to um, negative six. So this is sort of the outline of the graph. And then what? Um, what's the next step? So the next step is I do the little markings. So I mark the four um, good X values, basically is the idea. And how do I do that? Well, I take my starting 
point, my starting x value, and I just add a fourth of the weight of the period. So I add pi over six. Oh, got fractions. Okay, so let's see, what is this negative? Three pi over 12 plus two pi over 12. So negative pi over 12 is my next um, good x value. And then you see here why I didn't draw the y-axis because if I just guessed like, oh, the y-axis is right here. Well, guess what? Now it's all messed up because that negative pi over 12 is, is on the wrong side. That's why we don't draw the y-axis until later. Um, okay, so now let's see, that gets me there. So then I gotta keep adding to get to the next guy. I'm adding how much? I'm adding pi over six, but I should just keep it as two pi over 12 because this is already a pi over 12 denominator. So I'm just gonna keep adding two pi's over 12. So let's see, negative pi over 12 plus tw two pi over 12 is pi over 12, and then three, and then five. My spacing is kind of bad, but try your best. Um, okay, so now I know where the y-axis is because it's right in between negative and positive pi over 12. It's right in the middle. So there I can draw my y-axis correctly now. Um, all right, and then I just follow the pattern. That's my last step. So I go middle, which I already have that point. The next x value, I go to the top the bottom, sorry, not the bottom, but back to the middle, bottom, and then middle to make this shape. Uh -huh, but actually, that's wrong. The negative in the front, this is where it comes into play. This is where it flips it over. So what does that mean it does? Well, if you don't want to try to think about how that would flip upside down, what you can just do is do the pattern opposite. So it still starts in the middle, but instead of going up, you go down on the next one. Then you go back to the middle, then to the top, then back to the middle. And that'll create the upside down pattern. So that's what we're going to do here. We got on this X value, we start in the middle. The next good X value, we don't go to the top, we go to the bottom of the amplitude. The next good X value, we come back to the middle. Then we go to the top, and then we go to the middle. And again, this is just picking out one period of sign of, of this whole thing, but it keeps going forever. You would just have to keep adding by two pi's over 12 to keep the shape going. Okay, um, so this daily problem, let's see, is it due? I don't know. If it's not on grade scope, it's not due, and I decided there wasn't enough time. Um, but in either way, you should try to practice it when you get a chance to, even if it's not due. Um, so, especially because next time we're gonna jump to cosine. So, so here's one you can practice. This one is sort of just like uh, the same. Let me change it a little bit different, sorry. Two, let's put a... Put a, I don't know, a three in here. No, I already did that. I can't think what other numbers are there. How about four? X plus pi over four, I don't know, minus one. So that's like the same. But then if you want, so that's the daily problem if it's due. If it's not due, then don't worry about it. If it's not on grade scope. Um, if you want more practice, I'll do some of these laters later. Um, but some more interesting ones are like this. So what happens if I stick like a pi here and a number there? We should try that. Um, or if I stick a fraction there, you should try that one too. Okay, so those are good fraction practice. All right, I'll see you next time.